Hello. Uh, we're back. Hey, sorry for the uh, week of silence. Uh, I was pretty busy, and also, uh, what I figured was that you know I feel like this has been running on for quite a while. So I figured the best thing I should do is to just go ahead and to get a lot of work done on this song, just for the sake of finishing it up, um, and then kind of just make a few videos about <clears throat> what I did. So that's what this and the next few videos are going to be. Yep. Uh, I did quite a lot of work. The song's pretty much done in terms of writing. Pretty much. Uh, I'd say it's about 95%. There's like a little few things, you know, fill gaps and whatever, you know, little tiny things that you think of after the fact. But it's, you know, for the most part done. And then after this series of videos, um, I might make one video where I just, you know, tie everything up in the composition like 100% finish. Kill off all the extra um, characters. Yeah. Uh, that guy that also talks next yeah, to you. Right get rid of him. Uh, and then, uh, or I might just do that off camera. And uh, either way, the next few videos after that is going to be just me mixing. So you can see like what I do in the mixing phase that's like after the composition is done, all that sort of stuff. And then I'll talk about like a few like, okay, you're done with your song or are you scenarios <laughs> or yeah. where you like, you know, you check your master to make things, make sure things are correct, like phase and like make sure your low end is all tight and everything. Um, so yeah, let's get to it though. So uh, last time we left off with this piano part, you know, before we got back into the second drop or whatever. So I'm just going to play from there and uh, let you hear the whole song out into the end. Oops. Ha <laughs> ha. Did you like it? Teaser. It was really good. That's not where I should start. Uh, here, where the piano is. Have a good time the second time. Take two. Uh, Take two over you lesson. You you messed up. Maybe I'll you edit did. that out. You, <laughs> <laughs> what? Oh, okay, I'll do it again. No, just, uh, uh, we, we, we have a good time here. <laughs> yeah, we like to make jokes. Uh, cool. So that's cool, right, guys? Right? You yeah, had fun. Yeah, uh, there's a lot of stuff to cover. Yeah, so really great. Can you tell us more? <laughs> I'm going to get right to it. Bye. <laughs> All right, so I guess the main thing to go over would be there's a new base happening. And I'll go over how I did that. Um, All right, so... 
I didn't really want to like repeat the drop that I already had. I figured maybe I'll just, I mean, I'm sort of taking a risk, but I felt like maybe it's paying off. I, I, I wanted like a heavier part and the bases we had weren't going to do it really. Uh, so I made a new one just straight from scratch. Um, and I'll just hop right into here. So this is comprised of two bases actually, because I made the initial sound, which is the sound that the listener hears for the most part. Um, and then I beefed it up with another layer and I'll go over that afterwards. So here's this one in solo. It's really quiet. Okay. So it's got so much like vocal to it. Yeah. And that's coming from one oscillator in particular. So let's hop into massive. Okay. Like I, I know some people frown upon that, like you are like that. Uh, what is it? Are you what? seeing this? What the know. fuck are is that? Seeing? Whoa! I guess they frown upon it too. Uh, I guess we're gonna pause the capture, guys. Okay, sorry. <laughs> uh, that some, was dumb. Sometimes programs break. Uh, so let's. But we're back. That wasn't even break. What was that? I don't know what that was. I've never seen that before. Anyway, let's hop into Massive and see how I did it. This one, in case you forgot. Shit. Which you didn't. We forgot. Because <laughs> you're seeing it in real time or uh, all at once. We're. We, there, it's like an hour ago. Out there. Okay. It was like an hour ago for us, and it's seamless for them. <laughs> Let's save this time though, how about? Saving, you got, thanks. Well, we're already better off massive loaded up. Okay, so let's just hop right into it guys. Oops. Here we go. All right, so uh, operator one, uh, oscillator one is wicked. Um, you know, I'm just gonna solo each one so you can kind of hear how it goes. Actually, I should probably start off talking. All right, so this oscillator in the middle, this is like the basis of the sound. This is where you're he what you're mostly hearing. So I'll solve that one first. And and what's going on is essentially uh, most of that sound is just coming from the fact that the oscillator is in formant mode. And I am automating. If I uh, click on this guy, I'm automating. Um, the intensity knob here to make it kind of sound like you can see how it goes whoop. Yeah, that's this automation and then it comes back down. So that's pretty much, and I'm on scrapyard oscillator and that's most of like the identity of the sound. And then I have these other two oscillators that kind of just make it sound more gritty. So first is wicked. You can see that just kind of adds a little bit of a distortion kind of sound. gives it kind of like a saw behind it. Um, and then this deep throat oscillator down here. And that makes it even more gritty. Um, the only other thing really going on here is I got it on a band reject filter, but the filter is all the way, like the cutoff is all the way up. So it's not making too much of a difference. It's just kind of getting rid of uh, some of those nasty high-end frequencies that I didn't want. Just a little much. Yeah. Um, and yeah, that's it in the massive. That's all that's happening. Um, then I have it being uh, brought through uh, isotope trash, which is distorting it a little bit. Not too much. Actually, yeah, quite a bit. <laughs> that's that. It's a ton. I mean, it doesn't change the identity of the sound. It just really kind of beefs it up a lot. Okay, uh, next in the line, EQ. We've got the EQ cut off at 225, and this is because I have a sub. My sub down here is mimicking literally every single like note that this is doing. So the sub will hold down the high or the low frequencies, and you don't really want too much of like this space because this is where your kick and like your the low end of your snare is hitting. So it's good to cut this off of the higher end bass. 
Um, and then just let your sub carry this end. Um, and, that, and that'll keep your low end tight. Uh, and then what else? What do we, I got to go through a reverb. Two seconds of decay. 36% wet. Uh, no cutting off of the frequency and diffusion. So it's pretty much just a flat uh, reverb. And... Just to give it that roomy sound. Um, and then the only other thing really going on here is this Effectrix, which is really just what I'm using for the vinyl stop at the end. Um, and I don't think I'm even using that here. Let me look at this. Okay, I'm using it like right here. So you can hear how it goes like, Mew! it's taking like a dive. That's just Effectrix. Um, I guess I'll open it. I've just got this vinyl stop drawn in. You can use a bunch of different programs for vinyl stop. It doesn't really matter. All right, cool. You and can then, even do that just with like pitch, couldn't you? Uh, yeah, but it has a different effect because the vinyl stop actually slows the audio wave. Oh yeah, okay. So it has like a different. Sound. So it's just like uh, pitch and time in one little guy. Yeah, it's like if you pitch something down, if it was an audio clip, but didn't have it warped, so it stayed in time. Gotcha. You know what I mean? So it actually slowed down as it pitched down. Um, Sometimes yeah. I wish I dad could do that in life. <laughs> I mean, the slow down part. Uh, and then this macro one is just kind of controlling uh, the timbre of the sound overall. So I'll just kind of, I'll take off the automation. I'll just sweep it so you can hear what I'm talking about. So yeah, I have that sweeping up and down in different parts. Not too noticeable, just a little subtle movement. Um, and that's that's pretty much it for that bass. And then I have this bass underneath it, which I created later um, because I felt like after I was listening to some of the stems in the folder that Zansky gave me, that I felt like it needed mo even more of like a grittier distortion sound. So I made this bass. It's like sand. Yeah, it's really, uh, really rough. And there's not too much going on in Massive. Uh, it's just one oscillator. It's what, electric? OK, so it's the electric oscillator, bed minus plus mode to give it some movement. I have just an LFO that's just gradually sweeping. Um, Wavetable at about 2 o'clock. And that's it in Massive. But where the, uh, the bulk of the sound is coming from trash. And so I'll take that off. As you can see, it's totally different. So what I did was basically, I opened Trash and I, I was looking for a really good distortion uh, uh, setting to begin with. And then I went back into Massive and found a wavetable that worked with it. So what I found first was Crunchy Taco. That's the, the sound that I settled on because it has just such a, a crispy, uh, really saturated sound. And to let's it. face it, tacos, how could you fucking go yeah. wrong? Tacos are fuck. <laughs> if you don't like tacos, leave. I don't think that exists. There's no one that doesn't like tacos. I mean, if they don't even eat even if meat, you're a vegetarian, they, they, you still they, like yeah. taco. You just don't want to eat it. <laughs> you just so if you I just buy, feel bad about it. So yeah, this is this is one of the instances where I found the distortion. I just threw a saw wave on Massive, and then I started cycling through uh, the different distortion settings. Mm -hmm. Uh, and then found this and then decided I would figure out a better wavetable for it after the fact. So that's something to keep in mind when you're sound designing. Um, if you have distortion, uh, find a good distortion setting first. That generally works out good. And then find the wavetable. And again, I'm cutting off the lows, I'm cutting about 300. Um, and then I just have the same reverb and the vinyl stop from this one. So I'll just uh, let you hear before and after this layer. So yeah, definitely adding a lot. Mm -hmm. Oh, and also one thing I guess I should have talked about is uh, another thing that's going on in these is in the voicing tab, uh, I have this one, this main one. I have it set to three voices. I had the pitch cutoff turned on and I brought this down because this defaults at 100. Um, and I brought it down to 0.12. So 
this the fact that this knob is over this far is barely it's like barely anything i could never but, figure out what the what the pitch cutoff actually does um the main use that i have for it is when you use restart via gate generally that stops you from being able to have um a wide sound because what it does is it it aligns the phase of each oscillator to be perfectly with each other okay so that there's no difference on the left or right um so if you just hear not very panned. I take off restart via gate, you can kind of hear it gets mm -hmm. like different. It's less sharp. So restart via gate sharpens your noise, especially for distorted basses. I almost always use restart via gate. Okay. And then if you want to make it wide afterwards, that's when you go for the pitch cutoff. Because once you turn that on, it alternates the pitch of each um, voice. And since I have three, that's three different ones that are slightly altered. And then okay. when you turn on pan position, yeah, then it allows I, I've, it, I've it, it that, has the yeah. difference in each one, so oh, that okay. it'll sound fuller. So it fills it, in like some if, pockets. If I if I bumped it up more, you can hear more of it. Yeah, Bravo. So yeah, flat versus 3D. That's what's going on with that. And then I also did that for this one. Uh, this space. Let's just pop in real quick. Let me take a look. This one I have on two because three sounded like kind of too much because this is a really distorted sound. Um, so I only went with two just so I could have like a left and right. And I have it panned. I have the pitch cutoff on this one turned way up more. Um, just for like an even more wide effect because I really wanted this one to accentuate the stereo and I have this pan position turned on but I have it turned all the way to the left right so that's going to give it a slightly different uh, sound I like how you said this right one. after left yeah <laughs> all the way right, right, all right, the way to the left right, right. to right. the left yeah. <laughs> alright so that one's on the left right and this one is on the right <laughs> did it again <laughs> fuck <laughs> Well, this is why we this have one, video. Yeah, this one, okay. This one, see? This one <laughs> is over here. The it's other one's one. right here. Just say east or west. So that helps them not, I guess, uh, fight with each other in a way. Um, that's something you have to feel out. I just thought I would mention that because that's that's a, an important thing. If you try to like recreate this instrument and then didn't do all that voicing stuff, it wouldn't sound good. It would sound over. So it was important that I mentioned it. So yeah, that's pretty much it for the bass. Um, yeah, that's good. Oh, and I just want to talk about compositionally. One thing is, um, I made this sound and then it kind of came out of nowhere. So what I did was I, I put a little thing in here to introduce the sound to you before it dropped right here. And then I just have it like filtered. I have it cut off um, in a high pass. Sweet. So that's pretty much it. And then the rest is just automation and the notes. The only thing that really is complicated is that there's just a lot of like little 16th notes happening. Rhythm. You Everything it, else or is you don't. pretty, I mean, it's three notes. So it's the rhythm that makes it pretty much. All right, so cool. Hope you learned stuff. Uh, bass, that's good. H happy birthday. And uh, on the next episode... Uh, we're going to talk about how your song can get you a girlfriend. Yes. Um, um, or maybe just the how I did oh, the We vocoder. might delete that. We might delete the girlfriend one and just do the vocal. I am actually more interested in the vocal one. Uh, yeah, on the next episode, vocal. So yeah, let's just do Here's that Here's a instead. sneak. A peek. Wh whoops. See you tomorrow. <laughs> oh yeah, I got to start the thing. So yeah, come on we'll, back. We'll examine that next. Have you already got a girlfriend. Good, good, good job. Goodbye. <laughs>